to come to you. Where is the student who, can you just wave your hand so I can see where you are? Zoe. Oh, you're talking about Eitan, the one yeah, who asked about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. I, I would treat it as follows. First of all, I'd start that question by saying, leaving a question, leaving it aside for just a moment, the, 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 the tech whitewash, I'd say, first, do you recognize the amount of work or the work that Israel is doing around the world? Question number one, when it comes to solar, when it comes to water, when it comes to aid, when it comes to whatever the innovation is. And if the answer is no, there's really nothing to talk about, right? But if the answer is yes, then it opens up a whole other dialogue and say, these are the Israelis that we are here to celebrate. And you, as Mr. BDS, should say, look, these are the type of people that I stand shoulder to shoulder with. This is the type of, these are, this is the Israel that I want to stand with. That is the answer. It really is, look to these organizations and others that are doing great work. And if you recognize the wonderful work that you are doing, we can debate the other stuff. But as long as you recognize the work that's actually happening, that I think is the appropriate answer. Thank you. Gil? Yeah. Uh, j just to add on, I think I would answer. I would answer in a question, like a Jew does. Um, in the 140 countries that Israel has been operating for the last 60 years, please ask whoever approaches you, are there any BDS activists in those countries? And the answer is no. The answer is no. Uh -huh. The BDS is only in countries where they don't know what Israel is doing. So please send them over to Africa, send them to Latin America, and they will come with a different uh, perspective. And apart from that, Israel uh, trains officially Palestinians, Jordanians. In the past, we've trained Egyptians. So I think that's also another angle to the answer. Good. Thank you. Um, we will take another round, but I don't want to neglect uh, Zoe's question. Concretely, young people, they want to get involved. They want a job, an internship experience. Who, who would like to, Sivan? Yes, we, we have an office in New York because we are 501c3 organization. So we always looking for interns to help in New York, but also in Israel. In Israel, as I mentioned, mostly engineers, but we need help doing research and so on. We don't take yet people to Africa because where we operate, it's so far. Uh, but hopefully, maybe in the future, we will. So anyone who would like to Bar intern? Bar oh, Bar Mitzvah, but Mitzvah, yes. Anyone who wants to adapt a village and travel with us, we do that. Great, thank you. So wherever <laughs> Zoe is sitting, if I were you, I would come to the stage afterwards. I would get email addresses and business cards and start sending CVs. Okay, we go to the next round. Whoever would like to, yes sir, please step to the microphone. Hi. Tell us who you are. Hi, my name is Avi uh, Billet. I'm a rabbi in South Florida. Uh, all this presentation has been wonderful. Uh, the aid that you do is, uh, is fantastic. Much of it sounds like it's a response to, to crisis more than anything else. So I have a two-part question. Is there a vision for more innovation? And if so, who's, who, who's uh, seeding that or who's running any type of uh, thought that would expand whatever innovation Israel is doing in other countries? And, and a little more on what the, I think it was what the ambassador said, how much do receiving countries become ambassadors for Israeli Hasbara and in turn influence perhaps the way the UN looks at Israel? Thank you. Thank you, sir. And then whoever's standing behind you, please step forward, tell us who you are. Hi, my name is Grace Mizrahi. I'm from New York. Uh, my question kind of ties into his question, which is just uh, out of curiosity for Sivan, where does your wonderful organization get its funding from? And how, how can you keep going? Thank you, Grace. Let's take another. Yes, sir. Hello, my name is Noah Barshane. I'm a recent college graduate and I live in DC. So something that, a, a characteristic that I've noticed in common with a lot of entrepreneurs is the chutzpah that their idea is worthwhile even if other people don't recognize it yet. And to me it seems that that's kind of happening in Israel's aid space, that, pe that we're going out and providing all this help to people when other people don't necessarily like, realize it yet. So is there, do you think Israel's doing enough innovation to communicate to, is, to its stories to the rest of the world? And do you think that that needs to be the next innovation front of how to spread that to the rest of the world? 
so, so maybe we start with Noah first. Thank you, Noah. Um, innovation, entrepreneurship, and better communication. We started earlier there, but who else would like to add to how that can be improved and done more effectively? A taker for that one? Gil. Gil, please. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, recently, we've started in Mashav a very comprehensive um, program on innovation and entrepreneurship. And uh, the main area we're operating at the moment is Central and Latin America. And this is in cooperation with the Organization of uh, American States, the OAS. And up until today, we've trained close to 20,000 uh, what is considered youth in UN terms. That's uh, no offense to anybody, but that's um, uh, people aged up to 35. Um, and we, we are actually bringing the Israeli uh, example of uh, innovative uh, training to communities in Latin America, working with youngsters on how to operate small businesses, how to be better entrepreneurs, and this has been a great program with great response, uh, very much appreciated by uh, Central and Latin American leaders, and there's a lot of demand to duplicate this. I, I was just uh, Friday at the, the United Nations, met with the new administrator of UNDP, and they want to duplicate this with Mashav, with Israel, in other parts of the world, in Africa, in Central Asia as well. And I think we are going and heading in that direction, and, and uh, we'll probably have good news about that very soon. Great. Thank you. Sivan, um, Grace asked, you know, Good question. You know, money has to be raised, bills have to be paid. How Thank do you, you Grace. Do Thank you for asking. And uh, I would like to, to say that, as I mentioned earlier, it doesn't cost too much money to impact. The most to bring solar energy to an entire school or a medical center, including installing solar energy for computers in all the classrooms, in all the homes of the teachers, enough for businesses, all of it, never cost more than $18,000. So we are very lucky that we always have either a family, either a bar mitzvah boy, or a girl, or a church, or a synagogue, adapting villages. And as I told you earlier, we want to reach 1,000 villages, 6 million people. And to reach, we need about four million dollars a year for the next seven years and hopefully we can do it and reach it and continuing somebody asked about developing innovation and about the united nation if i can answer that as well because when gil ashkel the ambassador was the ambassador of israel in kenya a few years ago in the united nation in kenya they had a competition and I came, you remember Gil, and I presented one of the technology that we developed. It's a remote monitoring system allowing us to monitor everything that is happening, how much water we are pumping at every village, how much energy. And when I presented at the UN, they gave me five minutes to speak. I mentioned Israel 20 times. I knew I have no chance, right? And yet we got the award from the UN about the Innovation Award. <laughs> and, and really, only now, only this year, UNICEF reached out to us. I couldn't believe it. And asked us, we want to give you money. Please come. Help us in Cameroon. We have too many refugees that are fleeing Boko Haram from the north, from Nigeria. We have so many refugees coming from the civil war at the Central African Republic. Please come, help us to pump water, help us to bring energy. And now we are getting funding from UNICEF and together the UNICEF team and the Israeli team are on the ground helping refugees. And I think that to answer the questions, little by little, it will change. Thank you. Can I add, can I add Bill, please. Yeah. I know there was a question that was asked here are the beneficiaries of Israeli yes. development uh, goodwill ambassadors? And the answer is de a definite yes. As I mentioned, 300,000 trainees have been trained by Mashav up until today. One of them happens to be the president of Honduras. Uh, half of the government of Guatemala are graduates of Mashav. The former foreign minister of Georgia uh, 
is a graduate of Mashav. And we know that in every juncture where you have a graduate of Israeli training, which, by the way, is funded by the government of Israel, so people are very grateful for that, in every political juncture in the world where you have a graduate of Israeli training, we have a goodwill ambassador there. And, and one more, um, people ask here about the, the popularity of Israel around the world. I can tell you that in Africa, for instance, and I see surveys of popularity of Israel in Africa, Israel is one of the 10 most popular countries almost in every country in sub-Saharan Africa. And I think there's a direct link between Israeli development work and the popularity of Israel within these societies. Thank you. Yotam, did you want to get in on this one? We're just yeah, about to um, conclude. So first of all, um, uh, Sivan mentioned the UN as a partner. Um, so I, I really shared it uh, with Sivan. In fact, um, our biggest funder every year is the UN. Um, we get uh, from UNICEF mostly, but also from uh, the UN Agency for Refugees, the World Health Organization, um, and few other organizations. We get more than $3 million every year. Um, so, so that's, you know, give you a little bit of a different perspective then. Because there's a big difference between the UN offices on the ground that are looking for professional organizations who are actually doing the work and sort of the more political agenda in the UN uh, in the headquarter. Um, so that's about the UN. And about getting involved, uh, for us, I think one of the most um, exciting opportunities for us to get engaged is actually not so far from here. Um, Israel responded to Houston, to Florida, to the earthquake in Mexico, to um, the hurricane in Puerto Rico. Uh, I was just there two weeks ago. And, and I think that's creating a very clear and, and, and kind of simple opportunity for young professionals, for college students, and maybe in rare cases even for um, high school students to get involved together with Israeli professionals. But I have to say, the work where we really need your help is not only in the field, is really what all my colleagues, with, colleagues with, will agree here, is by spreading the word. There's so much more that we could do and that we should do with technology and with communication to, to spread these stories of innovation, these stories of humanitarian aid um, for Israel. So we really need your help with that. That's the, the honest truth. Yotam, thank you very much. Um, we're, we're going to, uh, let me make, a, if I may, a, a penultimate remark before I thank you and the panelists. Um, among the organizations I've had a pleasure and honor to lead, I mentioned to you, uh, a decade ago, I was director of uh, something in Germany, in Berlin, called the Aspen Institute Germany. Uh, I had a board member at that time, who has since passed away, but at that time, a decade ago, he was in his early 90s, uh, a German Jew named Ernst Kramer. He had been for years the editor-in-chief of an important German newspaper called Die Welt. Very spry, sharp-tongued, diminutive fellow who was on my board and I had liked him, appreciated him. We'd have lunch every month or so. Um, I'd go down, he'd come to the office where he was editor in emeritus every day at 92. You know, still using a typewriter, by the way, tapping out columns. And uh, one day I met uh, Herr Kramer and he said, how are things, how are things? And I said, well, if you look at the headlines today, not good, you know? And I said, this, that, the other, it just looks dire. And he looked at me and he said, Jeff, fascism, communism, Islamic extremism, we're put on this earth to tackle big problems, okay? Holocaust survivor. Um, this is a panel tackling big problems in an incredibly, exceptionally creative, tireless, fearless sort of way. Thank you for what you're doing. Congratulations on what you're doing. And all of you, thank you. A great audience, wonderful questions. Have a good afternoon. Thank you very much. <laughs>